Hello YouTube. Um, I wanted to make a video today uh, doing just a quick little fix for the ignition. I My car has only broken down on me like maybe two or three times in having it and driving it. And unfortunately, I was going out somewhere, of course, had a passenger in the car, and that's the worst time ever for your car to break down. But I was on the freeway, and we missed our exit, and then I was already over in the slow lane, and I was like, uh, I could tell it was like I was running on two cylinders. So I thought initially that maybe the um, linkage, one of the linkages had come off or something, because that's happened to me before. Um, but when I was able to pull over and you know, stop on the side streets, I saw nothing wrong with the car. And I figured it was the ignition, but <clears throat> you know, a tow later and getting home and tinkering around with it, I confirmed it was, um, I think the points or the electronic ignition went bad. So, you know, a quick internet order later um, on Amazon and I got a new electronic ignition. Um, I think the reason the other one failed might be because uh, the coil resistance was too low because when I was looking around on YouTube and some stuff someone said uh, if your resistance is less than 3 ohms then it'll fry your ignition and sure enough I tested the coil that was on there and it was only 2.9 and I mean maybe that's seems kind of close. I, I figure it would run, but um, I tested a, a blue coil I had on my 1600 or the 1641, the Type 1 engine, and it was testing at 3.1, so I threw that coil on there and it still wouldn't run, so I figured the ignition was toast and threw on some old points and condensers from like a new old stock uh, little thing I had, and it started to fire. I mean, I'm not going to say it was running good, but I confirmed at least what the problem was. So, it's raining outside so I'm going to uh, brave the rain till I get to the carport and bring you on this little igni uh, ignition adventure. So here we have our type 4, uh, the DTM shroud, I have dual DRLA, I think they're 40s, um, carburetors, uh, sync link cable adjustment or cable linkage system. Um, I highly recommend it. I messed with the uh, crossbar um, all throughout having dual carburetors and I just it was such a pain to get it to synchronize or you get you think it looks good but then when you start it up it doesn't run good. Um, this system it's it's amazing it just has the one carburetor the other one runs off the other carburetor and you just get the slack out of the cable and it's just God, it just runs so much smoother than uh, the crossbar and it kind of looks cool so it adds a little bit of blink factor I mean this isn't the best looking engine bay and I'm definitely will admit that but uh, anyways uh, I think the only thing we need here is a Phillips head so I'm just take apart the distributor I'm going to unscrew the points. Take the old points, or the old, new, old points out. I have the screw, but I think the new system came with a new one. And we take the little wire off. It's on there like really good. All right. Denser wires. Shit. All right, let's get a, a little close up. Why not? All right, so my my distributor has been locked out. Um, I have the CB black box for ignition, that's what these wires are. They're going into, um, you know, the interior of the vehicle and 
got you know some power the negative and uh, anyway for that to work you have to lock out completely the advance in uh, your distributor because um, it's all controlled via the black box now the, we got the new Protronics ignition um, God, it's actually raining. I'm not a big fan of the rain. <laughs> I'm gonna set this up back here so you can get the overall view. Because I don't have a tripod. One week GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition. One wire through. It looks like it's going to be a bitch to get through. Hopefully it's not too bad. Oh, it's not Why not? The new securing screw. And drop it in classic fashion. I didn't even hear it hit the ground. Shit! Bang! Fell in the towel, that's why I didn't make a noise. Really need a magnetic screwdriver. Okay, we'll just put it in here. This way. Alright, so it's pretty much in there. And then it came out. There's no directions that came with this thing. I thought you had to set a gap or something like that. Yeah, it's really coming down. Um, so then the magnetic collar goes around the shaft. Uh, from my experience, it's kind of a tight fit. Oh, this is a really tight fit. I'm not really digging that. I'm wondering if that's not the right one for this distributor. And I'm wondering what I did with my old one. I can just use that. Just say fuck it and run it. Because, oh hell no, that ain't gonna work.
I think I'm gonna go find the old one because I'm not comfortable with how tight that is going on to there. I'm gonna never be able to get it off. I might not be able to even get it off right now. So, tune back in, right? Yeah, I don't think I have it anymore. So. Well, just have to put it on there. It does have a part number on it, so. Um, definitely could be the wrong or right part. got this socket that I figured would be a perfect fit and it is. That seems to be seated. Stick the rotor on. The cap on. Took a longer a bit longer than that should have, but you know me. Should help. Always happens when you think something's going to be an easy fix, you just drop the screw and you spend 10 minutes finding a screw or whatever. And nothing's ever easy, right? So the power wire goes on the positive side, and my negative wire goes to my negative um, black box wire. Okay. I'm going to cut the wires back, get out of the way. We shall see if it will start. Anyways, that was the electronic ignition. 